You guys have gone nuts on Twitter saying it can't happen. I don't know. Breaking news for you. Bernie Sanders raised a whopping $5.2 bucks since the resounding defeat of Hillary Clinton just last night. We're talking since last night, the New Hampshire primary. And by the way, the average donation was at just 34 bucks. So it's a big day for Bernie Sanders. He also broke bread with Al Sharpton this morning in Harlem. Sharpton actually seemed pleased with the meeting. Take a listen. My concern is that in January of next year, for the first time in American history, a black family will be moving out of the White House. I do not want black concerns mm. to be moved out with them. We must be front and center and not marginalized. And Senator Sanders coming here this morning further makes it clear that we will not be ignored. Joining me now, Morgan Ortegas and Charlie Kirk are back, and now Kirsten Hagelin joins us as well. All right, uh, here's the thing, Kirsten. Um, uh, you know, we were just having this discussion about the firewall, and, and for me, I think one of the interesting things about Bernie Sanders is he's talking about the wrongs of yesteryear, the mean-spiritedness of Wall Street, the, how capitalism has held everyone back, and it dovetails, in my mind, very nicely with the Barack Obama's, uh, the, you know, thing, and of course, the buckets of victims, uh, right. you know, and, and the, the grievances, all of those things play well for Bernie, so to, to write him off, uh, I think is a major mistake. I agree, and I think one of the issues he's had so far in connecting with the black voters in the South, where Hillary is doing much better in the polls, is really more name recognition rather than anything else. Hillary's been on the scene for so much longer, but with this play to Al Sharpton, who Barack Obama and Al Sharpton met at the exact same restaurant leading up to 2008, which I said, just, he should have had a photo op just, you know, digging into some soul food and some iced tea, you know, that would have made it even better. But um, Ta-Nehisi Coates, who writes for The Atlantic, also came out today supporting Bernie Sanders. So these are some you know, you've got the older generation with Al Sharpton, the younger one with Ta-Nehisi Coates. He's making a real play, and Hillary can't take those votes Well, Ben Jealous was there also. He spoke after Al Sharpton. He was formerly uh, in charge of NAACP. So he's putting this coalition together. And, you know, who knows what can happen, Morgan? I totally agree. I mean, we talked about this last week on your, on your show. And, and back in December, I started looking at the poll numbers in Iowa and New Hampshire, and I, and I said... Hillary Clinton is really in trouble, and, and it's about the size of, 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 the, of which she lost as well. I mean, double digits. Right. There's really no way to spin this. Um, she and her husband are talking about re-engineering their campaign staff, bringing on new people. But what I was really struck, and you and I talked about this morning, I was really struck with how tone deaf her speech was last night. You know, she went on this whole rant about how this is a right-wing crusade against her. And I don't think what she realizes is, no, this is a left-wing crusade against you. They're coming at you from the left. Um, so I think, I think she is in real trouble. I think the Republicans for a while, we've really been sweating about what are we going to do about Trump and Cruz and all of these people in the establishment lane. And so it's kind of nice now to see the Democratic pulling. Party sweating a bit now. Yeah, because a lot of people, Charlie, take a lot of the establishment folks say, you know, if it's Bernie, there's no way he can win. And yet, uh, you know, who can raise five million bucks in, in 12 hours? But, but uh, having said that, the, the, and, and that whole grievance bucket of victims uh, become the young people. Uh, the young people who have to pay these student loans off, who graduate and there's not a great six-figure job waiting for them. And you talk to them all the time. You campaign with them. You try to turn most of them around and teach them about the good things in capitalism. But this is no doubt a serious fight between the victims and the non-victims, I guess. No, absolutely. I'll say this, you know, our, our organization is now on a thousand campuses across the country and we run into students for Bernie groups all the time. And the only promising thing I have to tell your viewers is a lot of these young Bernie supporters have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. They don't know why they support Bernie, but they think he's authentic. They think he's just kind of that professor type guy that really believes what he's saying and that he can't be bought and he can't be compromised away from his core values. He talks about fairness and justice. And to put in perspective that $5 million figure that he raised in the last 24 hours, right. the Democratic National Committee ended the last quarter with $20 million cash on hand. In 24 hours, he raised $5 million, which is one-fourth of what the entire Democratic he, Party had cash on There's him. no joke. Absolutely and I, astonishing. And, and Charlie, the word authentic is the word you hear a lot with him and right. Donald Trump. 